Question of the day, do you think that public representatives should be allowed to block their voting constituents? And um, on a scale from one to 10, how supportive of terrorism is Rashida Tlaib? Uh, <laughs> update here, my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, is sitting far away from me because we haven't, we've never had a guest in studio this way yet in the new yeah, studio. New studio, that's weird. So this was, Rashida Tlaib has been in the news quite a bit. She's certainly been making a name for herself recently. Largely for actions that are uh, reprehensible. But I was going to say hypocritical, but you know. That's fine. That works right as well. Mine, mine, mine involves more moral outrage. Sure. Right? A little more pearl clutching. Uh, and I was trying to follow her because she was posting these videos and clips and tweets, you know, about how much she hates Israel like it's her job. And then I, <laughs> I found something out, stumbled across something that I had been blocked by Rashida Tlaib. And I was made aware that this is apparently a legal problem, correct? It is. It is. There's been some uh, pretty angry fights over the last couple of years regarding Trump and his ability to block Twitter followers. Now, we know that Trump uses that a lot as a medium for communicating some official, unofficial, a whole range of different communications. And so the Knight Institute at Columbia University filed a lawsuit in the Southern District of New York uh, a, a while back to say, hey, you can't do that. If this is a means of communication from a government official, it's not just your personal page um, or your personal account, then you need to unblock it. And they won that battle, setting a precedent uh, that brought us here today. And that was that was with uh, Trump's Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. I, 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 it was either his Facebook or his Twitter account. But ultimately, let's be honest, he probably the blocked them on all of it. I, I'm fair. I'm fairly certain. I, I know for sure MySpace as well. So yes, yeah, um, exactly. Well, that, yeah. Does, that, that was just a bunch of digital tumbleweeds and um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, top just, eight friends list, which is really just people who do YouTube makeup tutorials. Now. Fairly certain, just three now because there's yeah, so few pretty users, much. But just three and Justin Timberlake saying, "Come back." Uh, do you remember he reinvested, he reinvested <laughs> in MySpace? He's like, no, we're, we're primed for a comeback. Like skinny <laughs> no. jeans. No. Ooh, we're going to go. It's going to go the other way. No, not so much. Um, so, and by the way, this was in, uh, what was the ruling? I should ask first. So the ruling was that uh, when you have those kind of communications, you cannot block your uh, followers. Like, so it could be someone who is someone who's for you or someone who's against you. Um, and specifically, the, the question is, in a government that we have, in a society we have, will you need to have open communication from government officials? And once you step into that political light, you have to give up your ability to do certain things like shut up other people out from hearing what you're going to say. Well, and the idea, too, was this kind of goes to the what we've talked about with big tech is that it's the digital town square, right? So it kind of it, it's predicated on the same idea that you can't ban someone from a town hall just because they're critical of you. Absolutely. I mean, there's there uh, there is a whole structure and we've talked about this. It changed my minds. You've talked about it extensively over the years about how you have to be able to have open communication. But a lot of folks who can't stand the heat just want to block or they just want to because they want to they just don't want to deal with it. Right. And speaking of standing the heat now, I should I should mention, by the way, was this a, a Supreme Court? Was it just a federal court? It was out of the Southern District of New York. So, OK, yeah. um, this was a big win for the left. Obviously, They're like, oh, Trump can't block anyone. Look how thin skinned he is. Speaking of standing the heat, though, going to that, I, I want to be honest here. Um, what we're about to discuss is we just wanted an easy win. We wanted an easy win to just pad our record. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> which, which was just I told well, it was you. very clear. I mean, there was really only one. There's really on, only one answer. So, right. I, I mean, I go ring, ring, half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond. Yes. Is it illegal for a, a politician to block uh, a, a voter, a, a, an American citizen? And you said, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. And I said, OK, well, because uh, I am. <laughs> and you said, OK, let me get on that. And uh, <laughs> the citizenship or the. Yes. Yeah. No, no. Let's not do the whole Ted Cruz ineligible because mm. I plan on running in uh, in 2028. Ben Shapiro will be on the, the bottom of that ticket. He'll be my VP. Um, <laughs> so let me ask. So what was what uh, transpired after that? We found out that Rashida Tlaib had blocked me. Right. And you reached out. I did. Uh, so I sent a communication. Um, it, you know, there's a variety of different ways you can try and get hold of someone. Um, but we went through one of the more official channels um, that was going into the weekend. And yeah. Do you want to show, show everyone what you what you read there? Sure. A little show and tell. So this was the email you sent to them. It was. Uh, so I sent it directly and addressed it to the uh, representative. Uh, just explained there was legal counsel for you and, and regarding your Twitter account and the specific handle and set it out. Hey, pursuant to recent legal precedent, uh, my client requested you immediately unblock his access via at S. Crowder to the Twitter account at Rashida Tlaib and went into talking about how it's used for almost daily for government communications, specifically those related to uh, her service on the House Committee on Financial Services and the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. Now, that's an important detail because a lot of people are saying, well, it doesn't really count because she's not president who represents all Americans. And unless you're specifically in her district, namely, you know, Dearborn area, uh, it wouldn't apply here. 
but you didn't talk about just the district. Well, because it's not just about that. I mean, someone might have said, oh, well, you know, I don't represent you. Well, then get off the committee then. Right. right? I mean, that that would be a fairly ridiculous argument, which is, again, when we talk about an easy win, it's an easy win because the law is very clear. And if imagine if, if the response had been, well, I actually don't care about you despite being on a committee that affects you directly. Right. I divest from you would be what they would say. Yes, that would that would. I'm still not be, entirely clear. I know I, they use the term divestment. Like, do you just I, mean I, not funding? So you mean like when's divestment? Oh, anyway, sorry. yeah. Go I ahead. mean you're getting out of the investment. Yeah, I understand. It. It's just affected. Uh, uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you sent this email, and we yes. and I believe we received a response. Uh, we did receive a response. That is okay. correct. Uh, and it, how long after? Um, it was about two business hours. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Is there, such, is there such thing as business hours wow. at that point? Just, I don't know. Yeah, when you're a lawyer, there's business hours. Okay. Bro. Yeah, for That's sure. That's true. I know the bills. <laughs> so, we, uh, so we got a response. Pretty short. Pretty easy. I think you probably see it on the overlay. But uh, hi, Bill. Ed S. Crowder is no longer blocked from accessing at Rashida Tlaib. Uh, that came from one of the in-house counsel with a house.gov email f that's in her office. And uh, again, an easy win. There was There's no real room to argue here. Uh, and they they did what they needed to do, which they should have just not have done it in the first place. And because if they hadn't done this, half Asian Bill Richmond was willing to go all the way to the end of the line. Isn't that right? I was willing to re make uh, <laughs> remake uh, West Side Story yes. in a battle with yeah. Rashida Tlaib's right. evil forces. They yes. could smell it on you. So uh, this is important for people to know. Listen, no people talk about this when you're pulled over. Know your rights. Know where you stand. Understand what legal options are available to you. This was an easy win for half Asian bills. Is there anything that you would tell people out there who might be uh, running into the same issue? Uh, you know, reach out. It's kind of difficult. There are some natural obstacles they put in place. If you want to go through uh, the website, um, you, there's actually a lot of representatives use it to where they filter out and you have to actually put in the zip code plus the four digit extension if you even want to send a message through their web form so we had to separately find an email address or you can tweet directly don't give up keep doing it um, because eventually they're going to have to get to a place where they're going to not block anyone period which should right. have been their policy in the first well place. this is uh, listen you, you mean to tell me that a united states representative is not familiar with the law is not familiar with the precedent sent that you are not allowed to vote voting constituents no i think she was because i didn't even i don't even believe that i had ever tweeted rashida Tlaib. Yeah. i think she went out of her way to block me they just a lot of these the people blockchain. live as though they're above the law and that's really what this is about listen i think if someone wants to block me i'm not taking that personally but now i'm you know i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna blow up her twitter but not in a bad way <laughs> i don't want to make your life hard all right that's my half asian lawyer bill richmond thank you so much we won we got him dirk Hey there, YouTube viewer. If you like this video, click one of these other videos playing in a box uh, up there and hit subscribe or the notification bell if you're already subscribed so you can find out about our new uh, non-controversial videos, which don't ruffle any feathers and, of course, are not a violation of YouTube's algorithms. <laughs> Everyone's welcome here, <laughs> except I don't know if we are, but it's our channel. Uh, I'm not sure how that works. <laughs>